Good morning, Relay family. This is Miss Folkoff, and I'm here today with one of my favorite books, The Oxcart Man. I hope you enjoy it as much as I always do. In October, he backed his ox into his cart, and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool he shared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on a loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from the sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughters knit from the yarn spun at the spinning wheel from the sheep sheared in April. He packed candles the family made he packed linen from the flax they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son had carved with a borrowed kitchen knife. He picked potatoes they dug from their garden. But first, he counted out potatoes enough to eat all winter and potatoes for seed in the next spring. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbage, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March when they boiled and boiled and boiled all the sap away. He packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected from the barnyard geese. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife, his daughter, and his son, and he walked at the ox's head for 10 days. Over hills, through valleys, by streams, past farms and villages. Until he came to Portsmouth and Portsmouth Market. He sold the bag of wool. He sold the shawl his wife had made. He sold five pairs of mittens. He sold candles and shingles. He sold birch brooms. He sold potatoes. He sold apples. He sold honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbage. He sold maple sugar. He sold a bag of goose feathers. Then he sold the wooden box that carried the maple sugar in. Then he sold the barrel he carried the apples in. Then he sold the bag he carried the potatoes in. Then he sold his ox cart. Then he sold his ox, giving him a kiss goodbye on the nose. Then he sold the, his ox's yoke and harness. With his pockets full of coins, he walked through Portsmouth Market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fireplace at home. And for his daughter, he bought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that sailed all the way from England. For his son, he bought a barrow knife for carving birch brooms with. And for his whole family, he bought two pounds of winter mint peppermint candies. Then he walked home with the needle and the knife and the winter mint peppermint candies tucked into the kettle and a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pocket. Past farms and villages, over hills through valleys by streams, until he came to his farm, and his son, his daughter, and his wife were all waiting for him. And his daughter took the needle and began stitching, and his son took his barlow knife and started whittling, and they cooked dinner in their new kettle, and afterward everyone ate a wintergreen peppermint candy. And that night, the ox cart man sat in front of his fire, stitching new harnesses for the young ox in the barn. He carved a new yoke and sawed planks for a new cart and split shingles all winter long. While his wife made flax into linen all winter and his daughter embroidered the linen all winter, and his son carved Indian brooms from birch all winter, and everybody made candles. 
In March, they taped, tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled the sap down. In April, they sheared the sheep, spun yarn, and wove and knitted. And in May, they planted potatoes, turnips, and cabbages, while apple blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up and started to make new honey. And geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as soft as clouds. I think one of my favorite things about the story is how it reminds us that everything is a cycle. Everything keeps going. Everything changes, but kind of always stays the same. I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I do. And that everybody is staying safe and enjoying their time at home. Have a great day.